Welcome, everyone. In this use case, we'll zoom in on testing the operating effectiveness of the controls that we've identified in our processes. In performing the test of operating effectiveness, we'll be verifying each individual attribute of the control to ensure that these attributes have been performed in accordance with the design of the control in testing these attributes. This means that we'll be inspecting various different types of documents, and we need to make sure that we can verify the sources of that information that we've inspected, as many different documents will have to be inspected. It can be very time-consuming and complex to review if no direct linkages are included. We therefore want to ensure that with this use case, we can show you how to perform this task efficiently and effectively, and therefore reducing the repetitiveness in performing your recurring sample items. In this specific example, we'll focus on a control in the derivative trade processing cycle, which we will display in the next few slides, where we'll talk you through the work steps as this is a fairly complex control. We have multiple work steps, the first one being the selection of our derivative contracts to test. As these derivative contracts are in a standardized nature, we'll use form extraction to extract all the relevant trade details from the respective derivative contracts, and we'll then subsequently reconcile that to the underlying SWIFT messages in the checklists by using document matching. Once the final reconciliation has been performed, we'll then proceed to assess if the various attributes of the control indeed indicate a correct sign-off, and therefore evidence effective operation of the control itself. In this specific example, we have created a control template in which we'll be testing recurring sample items. The template itself includes both attributes 1 and 2, and on the right-hand side in the document viewer, we already see our documentation included as defined in the work steps. We have various derivative contracts, all of which have the same layouts. We'll therefore use form extraction to very easily extract all of the details for us, where we can subsequently define the attributes we want to extract once, and Data Snipper will do the rest for us. We start off by selecting all the files we want in form extraction and then can start defining how the data should be extracted in setting up form extraction. We need to carefully consider the types of files we're extracting. Each contract relates to one separate document. Hence, we'll leave our extraction parameters at extract per documents. We then proceed to simply snip each data element on one of the files, and Data Snipper will automatically pull those details from the remaining contracts. This appears on the right-hand side in the preview of extractions, where we continue to proceed and snip the various data elements until we have reached the desired number of data elements we want to extract. In some cases, form extraction might need some help in identifying the keys, which it uses to locate the respective location of the data element we want to extract. We therefore now snip the keys close by the area we want to extract, which will enable it to locate the various data elements. As we can see in the preview of extractions, we simply selected three data fields on one file, and form extraction will extract the details for us from all documents. This specific setup can be saved for future references, and that's why we'll be naming the individual data elements that we're extracting to make sure that it's clearly defined what is extracted when using this template. These data element names are not only included as headers of the preview of extractions, but will also be visible when we save this as a template. By clicking on Save as Template, we can determine the name of the template and provide a narrative if preferred, which will also be visible in our My Template menu within Form Extraction. We then click on Export to Excel to create the SNPs for us, where we've now created direct linkages to the underlying files, which will enable us to also then subsequently copy them over to our Control CO1 tab, where we'll further use the SNPs within our testing. As we now have the source information included of each individual contract, we can start looking into the various aspects where we want to reconcile it to. So we have both the SWIFT messages as well as the checklists, which include data elements that should be present within the contract as well. Given that we're looking at various data elements across these files, there's no need for us to use the manual SNPs as we can automate our reconciliation by utilizing document matching. Document matching will enable us to simply define what we want to reconcile by looking at the input information and by defining the documents in which data snipper then subsequently needs to look for those inputs. We therefore create document groups within our document organizer. 
In the Document Organizer, we can simply create folders for each document type and drag the files into these folders. Grouping each of the individual file types together where we'll start off with the Swift messages. By creating these folders, we can specify the exact documents to be used in each reconciliation in document matching. It will simply look through both by separating the document types in groups. We can therefore distinguish which documents are to be snipped in each setup. In order to proceed with setting up our automatic reconciliation, we click on Document Matching and click on Start New Document Matching. Step 1 is to define our sample data, which we will identify by selecting our sample data that we extracted from the contracts. Make sure to select whether the headers are included in your selections. Subsequently, we select the documents we want to use. As we have defined our document folders, we will select Use Document Folders, and we'll select our Swift Messages and Checklist folders. Once we've defined our sample data and the documents, we will configure our reconciliation outputs. For each of the document groups, we will select separate output columns, which will allow us to inspect the individual SNPs on the document groups. So it's a matter of selecting the correct output column that we want to use for the respective data elements and document groups. As the respective columns are already stated in our Excel template, it is very easy for us to simply match up the desired columns. Once configured, all we need to do is click on Match All Rows and Document Matching will perform the reconciliation for us. As you can see, within a matter of seconds, Data Sniffer has performed the reconciliation for us. We'll inspect all SNPs to ensure that all information in the various documents reconciles. Upon inspecting these files, we will verify if the trade ID, trade date, and forward rate are all consistent. If that is the case, we can conclude by inspecting the sign-off where we'll use the validation SNP to evidence if a sign-off has occurred correctly, and we can use the exception SNP in the event we identify otherwise. In sample number two, we directly see that the trade date has been left empty. Document matching will leave the cell empty in the event that it's unusable to locate the respective data element when inspecting the date. We see that indeed there's a difference of one day, hence it wasn't snipped. This indicates an exception, so we'll use the exception snip to flag it as such. We also notice that the sign-off is not included, meaning this is indicative of ineffective operating of the control, and we'll flag that as such. We'll then repeat the same process for each individual sample, after which we can conclude whether or not this control has operated effectively. In performing our testing of operating effectiveness of controls with Data Snipper, we can very easily inspect all the files we need and link the inspected documents and data elements directly into Excel, ensuring that our reviewers can simply click through the individual samples efficiently and quickly, therefore making control testing fun and more efficient. Thank you for watching this video. Happy snipping!